Uh, so talking about like um on the in the on the bigger scope in terms mm. of funding mm. versus censorship. Yeah. Uh, there was another article that was released mm. uh with a poet. Uh. Mm. Okay. Yes. I, in the Straits Times. In the Straits Times, right? Uh, yeah. I forget his name now. Um, but. But he says that basically, well, one of the things in the article is that if you don't want to be censored, then don't go for government funding. But mm. though, is that true though? Like, I mean, <laughs> is this as simple as that? We, you just said that anything gets censored here in Singapore, so it's not necessarily the fact that just because it's funded, yeah. it will not, it will get censored, right? I mean, so in some situations, how does it work? what do you know of it? In some situations, there is a link because there are considerations uh, in the funding uh, agreement. Okay. Right. When you accept the funding, you have to sign off. You know, saying that you will honor certain things, that you will not contradict certain things, you will not go against, you know, um, 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 Singapore's policies, etc., 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 things like that. So there is a deal, okay, and that's fair. If you're gonna take my money, these are my rules. Okay, I think that's fair. They're not unreasonable rules. They are the usual OB markers. Right. Okay. The problem is, even if you don't touch that money, there are other bodies. Right. That are overall censorship. Right. So these are the film. The so film for film is board. the is the uh, 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 board of film censors, right? Censor, the BFC, right. right? And for us, it's uh, MDA lah. For stage arts, MDA. Yeah, right. So we right. still have to get the performing arts license. Right. Right, and that license has got nothing to do with where your money comes from. Exactly. It's strictly to do with what they will allow you to show the public. Right. Right. So that's a slightly more sort of um, I guess blanket jurisdiction, right? And that's what we were up against, you know, mm. because Chestnuts has not taken any money from the government, so we. We make no promises to any government body that we will honor them in any way. So the right? only body that can step in if you have no funding from any government sort of is MDA for the and stage because of that license, because uh-huh. of that piece of paper. Right. Right. Yeah. Um. So that's tricky because without that piece of paper, your performance is illegal. Right. Uh huh. Right. So I mean, we've had troubles with that before. I mean, long time ago in nineteen ninety, I don't know. Wow, 1999, I think. Um, yeah. There was one chestnuts where uh, a parent complained about um, um, crude language on stage. Okay. Right? And we had our license withdrawn. So midway through the run, suddenly, we were not allowed to go into the theatre. We oh, were wow. not allowed. It, you oh, know, the wow. police were actually there to stop us from secretly doing the show. Wow. You know, and, and to turn the audience away. You know, um, so what happened then? But at that time, uh, we had some we had some friends, Audrey Wong from the substation, who okay. had seen the show. Uh, she offered to write in for us and speak for us. She later became our first arts NMP, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, you know, and she wrote that you know, uh, from her point of view, you know, the advisory that we gave, right, which mentioned course language, yeah, was adequate warning for okay. any parent right. to make a choice about bringing their kids. So it right. was this parent's fault for bringing her kids when she should have known. Right. That there would be coarse language, you know, and it was un- it was not like horribly coarse language, it was very commonplace coarse language. Right. You know. So um that made sense. So they accepted that explanation and they gave us back a license one day later. Right. But without at all acknowledging the financial disadvantage, lah, you know, so it's up to us then to somehow rearrange refunds for everybody and all that. They don't care about that. Okay. You know, they just wash their hands of hmm. that. You know, so um which is fair enough. I don't expect them to come and babysit us and go, how ah, how ah, come and help you call true, people. True, true. You know, yeah. but I think a greater responsibility should be taken uh, because in this case, it was a mistake. They should have investigated it before they shut us down. Yeah. Right? Their yeah. knee-jerk reaction was, shut it yeah. down. Someone has complained. Yeah. But that person's complaint actually should just have been answered Right exactly. in, a, in a very polite way and say, yeah. ma'am, you know. And so it's a lot of inconvenience for yeah, you, i exactly. sure. So I think there is that sort of very um, cold sort of attitude that a lot of our legislation has towards the things that they're supposed to be protecting. Right. You know, yeah, so it's very damaging. You know, same oh same gosh. with what happened this time, right, with with, with, with uh, the recent chestnuts, you know. Yeah. It was, it was very unfriendly, you know, and even if you had really good reasons for doing it, there's no need to be unpleasant about it. Yeah. You know. And it was unpleasant. Love. It was unpleasant because it was, it was them making a choice and us having to scramble like mad to work around it. So Gosh. what we thought was a partnership, right, in terms of managing what the public gets, right. suddenly became uh, my problem. Uh, right? You know? Yeah. So I'm like, mm, I thought we were together on this, you know? Yeah. And, and, and I, 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 I did share this with the press. I said, you know, in the, in the years leading up to this, we'd had conversations with them, you know? And right. we thought we were on the same page. Yeah. And then suddenly it turns out, oh, we're not on the same side at all. 
you yeah, know this has and been an ongoing problem right yeah it has it has it seems like it hasn't improved in terms of censorship you, know? you you did this video a long time back with about with the amy what's her name uh, <laughs> royston tan's uh, cat yeah yes yeah yeah and no no things haven't changed at she's, all she's is she still there no she's left she's right, left but things haven't changed she's hmm. uh yeah i think i think it's because at the core of it you know uh, um there's a, there's a terrible conservative call uh, you know, in Singapore, that, that that is very stubborn and very very resistant to change. Right. You know, and and is very afraid of losing power, right. And losing authority. You know, and uh, at the same time, you know, and this brings us to another sort of censorship, sort of, uh, situation, right? right. Um, there's also a civil service that is aware of this conservative core and therefore double guessing. In every situation, they're always oh, thinking, oh, what, what will those people say? Yeah. And I don't want to be the one who gets a letter tomorrow saying, why did you allow this? So they overcompensate. Right. And they clamp down and they clamp down, even though upstairs might actually not care. Right. But they'll never hear about it. Yeah. Because it's clamped because down it's really even before it gets it. there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, you deal with this a lot when you're working with TV, for example, you know, where everyone's trying to guess what MDA is going to say yeah. before they send it to MDA. Yeah. And then you find out MDA actually was probably more open about it than the actual then, commissioning party. So it's always confusing, you know. Um, I'm thinking, for example, about the the Penguin books. Yes. Right? Or the Yeah, right? You know, and that situation where I think it was a very sort of bureaucratic response to a complaint, which really was just something that was already part of their normal system, mm. right? They already had a strategy to deal yeah. with these tricky books. They didn't need to panic yeah. and then overcompensate and then get slammed yeah. and then make inadequate explanations. I'm like, no, you could have just checked with your boss before reacting. Exactly. And said, what is our policy? Yes. You know, I always believe that it's better to diplomatically answer complaints than just do what the complaint asks you to do. And that seems to be what we always do. Yeah. The power is in the hands of the one who has lots of time to write letters. Yeah. That's really dangerous. I don't want to live in a country where bored, judgmental people make policy. Yeah. No. Wiser people should be able to say, hey, that person's a rebel. I won't listen to you. At the same time, that person's a complainer. I won't listen to you either. Yeah. It's got to be fair, right? Yeah. Maintain your middle ground. Yeah. Oh, and, and because we're only 50, right, everything's open to change. Yeah. You know, nothing should be fixed. Nothing should be impossible now. Yeah. You know, we're just beginning. So I think everyone kind of needs to feel that revolutionary spirit a little bit in what they're doing and saying, you know, no, I know why I'm doing it. I'm going to stick to it. Don't tell me there's a system and there's a status quo right. that I have to bow to. That's new too. Yeah. That system is new. Improve it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so serious we are. Yeah, no, I mean, this is, this is what it's for, <laughs> right? Do you think a majority of funding, in the article it said that a majority of funding comes from the government. Is that true? Do you find it to be true or is that... Because I, I mm. tend to think maybe not. Well, okay. I mean, there, there are meant to be three sources of funding, right? For the arts. And right? see... It's the government. It's oh. the commercials. I see. Uh, as in the commercial uh, sector. Yep. And it's the public in terms of uh, yes. sales. Right? I think Singapore relies very heavily on the government and then sales. Yeah. You know, um, some companies have had partnerships with corporations and all that. And that's, that's good. You know, but um, not a lot of that to go around. You know? Uh, so yeah, we are, I think, quite heavily reliant on government funding, this, this you know, point, which right. is a shame, which is a shame right. because that, that comes with a lot of issues, lah, mm. you know, um, and I've always felt that the, the lack of commercial funding or corporate funding right. is also related, I think, to policy, you know, because it's really about what kind of landscape you, you give to these mm. companies, yes. you know, there are a lot of companies so it links which, back to government still uh? it still does because yeah. you know everything in singapore links back to government right yeah but like i mean there are a lot of overseas companies you know these, these these multinationals that come by you know and they tend to be the ones more open mm. to arts funding but that's because in wherever they they normally well, where they began that's the that's the, the tradition that's what yeah. they do right yeah. as a company you have a sort of public service right right and public service includes the arts yeah right and so they come here and they sort of bring that mentality with them right but a lot of uh, uh, regional companies and local companies may or may not have, you know, sort of developed that thinking, right? Yeah. And it's up yeah. to the government to sort of push them in that direction, la, you know, because yeah. if you want to ease... But someone needs to push the government also, I feel. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. And, and the artists are always sort of the reminding, ones. right? Yeah. You know, always reminding. It's just that, you know, a lot of companies come to Singapore 
to be sort of really focused on progress and really focused on developing, you know, and not so much focused on let's build a community. Yeah.